Hello, and welcome back to Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. I kind of wonder if Mufi interacts with the Cat Chamberlain or not, or if it was just a coincidence that it was in facing its direction. But today is progress. I'm going to do... Shoot, it's reward plus Rathlos again. I need Rathlos parts, but I don't really want to hunt Rathlos again. But it's Glavinus. I'll get the Urgent done. Then after the Urgent, I'm going to do all the Prowler quests, hopefully. Depending on how long they take. I just kind of want to do Glavinus because it's the last of the four. Looking at the art. I like the style of these art bits to indicate the monsters, but this Glavinous one's pretty funny looking. It's like the head, the arms, and the tail, but its entire, like, torso is non-existent. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sever the tail. But it should be interesting. I've already fought one for a while but until I ran out of sharpness, so it shouldn't be too bad. I actually should be able to make more Palico gear. A whole slice of ham or meat or something at the bottom of a skewer. It's pretty silly. Also, I'm, I'm assuming it's uh, the frontier. Jurassic frontier. I was going to call it the jungle frontier. Yeah, progress. I don't know how much longer it will take before I reach... I, I don't know... No, I, high rank village is, I think, six star, maybe? Might be seven, though. But once I reach high rank village, I'm going to have to clear... Or once I reach high rank village is when I'm going to start considering clearing the starter hub quests because I'll have better gear at that point so it will be quicker and safer kind of an interesting that's not accurate the glavinus is way bigger than that isn't it like the one glavinus that I fought was huge and Rathian's not that big. Like, this image here makes Glavinus look small. But, like, Glavinus is two or three hunters tall. <laughs> I like the cutting of the plants. Like, unless the first encou encounter I had with the Glavinus was just a huge Glavinus. Also, I've changed... Since I changed my armor to have attack instead of health. I now have a lot less health. Well, I have 20 less health, which is fairly sizable. But it should be fine. I'm going to rush to three. It might not be in three, but oh, OK, even easier. Yeah, this Glavinus looks a lot smaller than I remembered, but maybe that's just the framing. No, I must have been fighting a really big Glavinus. Yeah, this looks smaller than I remember. But I might be crazy. It is a really long monster if you include the tail. It's gonna go a lot better because I actually have more than two mini whetstones. Which means that I'm not going to run out of sharpness. Which, in theory, I didn't necessarily run out. I just got to orange with no sharp, without any more sharpening left, so I didn't think it was worth 
That's one of the worst um, mounting animations. It still had it framed as if it was that, where I have the, the obvious opening for damage. Despite the fact that clearly... I mean, obviously you can just look at the color, but I'm used to focusing more on the camera frame because it works to indicate when... Or it does a better job of indicating when it's about to change. I was kind of lucky. I actually think I should have been hit there. That's worth it, even if I got hit. Oosh, too slow. That was lucky. I probably should have died there. Oh. Since this map has a bunch of side paths, I definitely want to make sure that I paint well. As long as they run sideways, I'm fine. It really is a very uh, fast monster for how big it is. Which is kind of cool. I didn't think it would do that. It wasn't... I thought it was um, the glowing... tail that indicated when it would do that attack, but it isn't. Because I don't think it always does the double swipe. I'm going to have to hold right away, aren't I? Because the camera... Okay, the camera framing pulls back, that's why. Or the camera pulls back, not the framing of the camera, but... I actually really kind of like those somewhat... I'm going to say subtle... elements of the mounting system. They're not subtle subtle, but they're like... They're not, you can't just totally ignore like the camera and stuff. It, it indicates information, it tells you stuff. I am gonna aggressively mini whetstone because I have a bunch of spares, so I should be fine. And normal whetstones sharpen more than mini whetstones, I think, because you don't actually always sharpen a full. Because it, Mini whetstones sometimes sharpen to the point where it says sharpness is at max, and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, wow. What a snipe. I genuinely didn't expect him to actually aim properly. Like, it's one of the weirder parts of Glavinus to me. Having never fought, fought it before, the last time I fought it. Which was in is in this game. It's just kind of crazy how it's a like it's a projectile monster too. Like I would have always assumed that it was a you know tail sword focus, but it actually has a lot of fireballs and stuff, which is really surprising to me. Shouldn't be too far from another. Oh, okay, apparently that was a zone, I guess. I wasn't paying enough attention. I didn't expect it to back into a zone that quickly. He's gonna crush me the moment I transition through. Good, I'm safe. Just stay away from the corner, please. Yeah, it's so fat, which is really cool. Because, at least aesthetically, I think it's a sl it looks like it should be a slow monster to me. 
Okay, that sound keeps triggering, but it's not the tail getting cut. I don't know if that just doesn't hit that area or if that roll is successful in dodging it. I'm always kind of curious. Kind of sick of this Glavinus' positioning though, constantly moving away, so I should be sheathing. Which is just annoying because I don't want to have to sheathe constantly when fighting a monster. Like, I think it moves... a lot. Which, if it moved to position to swing its tail, it would be less annoying, but... I kind of feel like it's a little bit overly prone to pointless motion. Like that hit there, I hit it and it steps back a long distance for like basically no reason. Like those step backs are annoying, but they make sense, stepping back for the sake of uh, Attacking. Uh, I think I should just element discharge, or elemental discharge, just one or the other, I think. To try to do as much damage. I think the tail might be damaged, actually. It might be cracked lately. Basically just doing that to get the sword out, which is a bad idea, probably. It has to be one of the harder tail cuts, though. Either I rolled correctly or it missed somehow. I want to assume that I rolled correctly, but it really didn't look like that. Yeah, if this tail can be severed, it's kind of... It has to be one of the harder tail severs, if it has to be broken and then severed, even if it doesn't, it's a very tall tail. Like, maybe I'm approaching it the wrong way? But, like, it doesn't stay in the ground for a long time. Like, unless it's super easy to sever, low HP, but only during certain... Like, you can only sever it when it's orange, but when it's orange it has such a small HP that it's easy to hit if you hit it with, like, a real good attack. I don't know. Because my limited, un limited understanding of this game suggests to me that it's entirely possible that it can only be severed when it's red, it can only take sever damage when it's red, and stuff like that can exist. It could be that you can only cut it after a slam. Like, that sort of thing wouldn't surprise me to learn. It's like there's something about that with... Not that, that exact sort of premise, but like... There's other similarly specific requirements for tail cuts, I think, on Nargakuga. Not necessarily you can only get it when it's stabbed into the ground, but... Like, you can all you have to damage it, and then you can only cut it when it's in the red-eye phase or something, at least in some version of the game. Some... one of the installments. Oh. I didn't expect that because he didn't know where I was because T-Rexes don't have eyes on the back of their heads. So I didn't expect him to attack that way. It's 
kind of interesting. I do like... I like Glavinus. I think it's kind of... Considering when it showed up in this game... It feels like it's just better than, like, Angina. As a, a monster design. In basically every way. In my opinion. Like, maybe Anjanath is better as, like, a realistic creature. Which I can respect. Like, as a crazy, over-the-top monster. In a fantasy setup. I really prefer Glavinus. And they sort of... To me, they seem to show up at the same... Tier? Approximately? Like... I can't even remember. World Anjana. I think you fight it in low rank. But it's at least like fairly high low rank, if I remember correctly. It's not a high rank only monster. And if it is, that's even more of a reason. Even bigger of a point in Glavinus's favor. Okay, let's hope it sleeps. Because, like, it's just weird to me. It's weird that Glavinus is a low rank monster. Haha, I killed it. Or I hit it. I didn't kill it, but. It's just very odd that it's a low rank. Like, it's the type of thing that I would assume would be like a early mid high rank it didn't sleep maybe it can't sleep there maybe it i went too quickly but it's kind of they they're similar enough that i think personally Glavinus is just better. I'm gonna try just hitting it on the ground then. I say that, but the better ground hit feels inconsistent. Okay, tail's not, not gonna get severed. Because I'm not gonna get another mount. And I can barely hit the tail unless I'm mounted. Or unless I knock it down after a mount. So, I give up. There might be some specific method to br sever the tail. Like, it can only be severed when it's red or whatever. Yeah. But it's so much better as, like, a T-Rex. It's worse from a realism perspective. Anjanath is way better. It does still breathe fire, though. Like, any realism doesn't really matter when the Anjanath itself also breathes fire. But, like, between a fire-breathing, fairly regular-looking T-Rex monster and a fire-breathing, spiky, self-tail-sharpening T-Rex monster, one of those is more realistic than the other. Like, Glavinus is maybe a bit unrealistic. His arms are pretty big. How many claws does it have? It has three. No, four. Okay. Three felt weird. Four feels reasonably normal. I know nothing about claws and hands on these types of animals. These are also fake, so it doesn't matter, but... I know that there's various birds who that have legs with three toes. Glavinus is fun, though. I, like, I like it... a lot. I think it's very... fun. <laughs> the picture... Just looking at it more, the vice-like 
grabber, like a vice grip, is what the Glavinous art looks like in the loading screen. Well placed, how can I praise you or thank you enough? Pizza shoes all made it back safely. So I need to see what six stars are. Burn our tickets. I have a bunch of people to talk to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do the Valor quests before I talk to all these people. So, what are the six stars? Glavinus, Gormagala. I wonder how it compares to Rise. Then Ogre. Another Glavinus. Tigrex. The Regios. Bleed. I hate bleed. Brachidios. That's a cool one. I'm surprised this is still low rank. Like, Brachidios is a low rank monster. I guess the low and high rank is not so much a definitive distinction necessarily, but. Yeah, no. In World and Rise, you would never hunt a Kirin in low rank. This is kind of just, I guess they changed how they distinguish low from high rank. I haven't seen a Lagombi in a while. And Bulldrum is a joke anyway, but... Well, this is, six star looks like, with the exception of the 15 quests that I'm going to get, it looks pretty good. Duplicate, gla Duplicate Glavinus is really weird. Oh, I know why it's weird. Because I'm going to talk to people in the other villages and they're going to give me more of the other, the Faded Four. I'm going to get another Gameth, another Mizutsune, and another Astalos from them, probably. Which makes sense. It was weird that there was a Glavinus on here, but none of the others, but I'm probably going to pick up quests for the other three. Yeah. I'm going to be clearing out the five stars now. I will do the talking at the end because that's kind of... I'll talk to this guy because he's here. Oh, this is just them being happy and positive. That's boring. But... It's time to prowl. I guess I should check for weapons. I have a Rathlos blade, how does it compare? 80? That's an upgrade, I think. It's probably better. This is better, uh, no. The beer? 84, 4, minus 5. Green is better than yellow, right? We have the Narga Shuriken, which is 80 and 15%, so I'm probably fine. I probably don't need to upgrade. It would be an upgrade, but it wouldn't be, like, crazy. Wow, actual armor value. That's a lot better than 9. I prefer the aesthetics for now. I don't need to worry about the Prowler actually being competent yet. I can deal with that in the future. But Prowler time. 10 Iopre is kind of annoying. Can you eat? Hey, you can. How do they eat? Do they eat in a tidy manner? I mean, this choice doesn't matter because none of these are going to do anything, but... Sure. I just want to see how the Prowler eats. 
They have forks and knives. Why do they have forks and knives? They don't eat with the forks and knives. They just scale it down. That's pretty good. But they're not eating with forks and knives. Why, why are they... I, I know the, like, fork and knife slam into table aesthetic, but... They don't use cutlery. They just eat it straight off the skewer thing. Like, I was reading the quest. I was like, oh, they're hunting an Io drone, but they need us to kill an Io prey. Because they can't do it themselves, apparently. Like, they don't eat, they, they don't eat properly. I, I really, these are my least favorite quests. Specifically, Prowlers versus Small Monsters. It's my least favorite of all the quests, I think. Even the duplicates. The exact, the perfect duplicate quests are annoying, but they're not that bad to actually do. They just are a waste of time that probably shouldn't exist. But they're not actively bad quests, in my opinion. I really don't enjoy small monster hunts as a prowler. Like, there's something about it that's just extra tedious. And obviously it would go quicker if I didn't harvest the bodies, but I don't want to waste materials. Or waste potential materials. And obviously these Prowler quests would probably go better if I had proper Prowler gear, proper Palico gear, so all of them did more damage. But there's something about, like, taking five, between four and ten hits to kill a monster that takes three to kill normally, that just really drags it down. I should be harvesting bugs. Harvesting bugs and mining are things that I should always do on Prowler quests. Because I don't gather those during normal hunts ever now i say that i can get most of the bugs that i really need just from uh neko means cat oh i've been meaning to search what neko means cat name was in japanese i'm curious whether it's cat means Neko, but kind of written in Japanese text. Or if it's the same name exactly and it's a different joke somehow. Because it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Neko means cat. The Japanese is, according to Google Translate, Ken Nyan Maru, which is Sword Nyan Maru. It's just a totally different joke. Which might not even be much of a joke. I don't know. But it's not at all the same. Like, the, the joke is not that. Which is kind of interesting. It's not even going for the same type of joke. And it's just a totally different joke. In the English versus... I think Nyanmaru probably is a joke. It's at least a pun. I don't know if it counts as a pun. I think it does. 
like naming a dog Woofington. I think at best would qualify as a pun. It might not even be a pun is why I'm uncertain though. It's kind of interesting because like it, it's it makes sense you don't always have to translate word for word joke for joke as long as the general general intent gets across which in this context the general intent would be it's a joke kind of because the actual like the joke itself doesn't need to be the exact same it just needs to be silly but it's it's funny how it's funny how different it is. Cause I think do it, it being the exact same, it's the sort of thing where you could do it in any language. Like you in French, you could have Neko. I can't. Rem I don't know why I can't remember the name or the word for means. It might not work because maybe it's not a single word. That might be why. Like, Neko Sein-Sha, or something silly. That would be Neko, it's a cat. This is kind of, I hope, well, I mean, zone four I already went through. I guess hopefully this eye of prey in the frost zones. But like, Neko Sein Sha kind of works. And I don't know any other languages. Uh, Gato? Is cat in Spanish, maybe? It's like Neko something in Spanish, which means means Gato. Like the basic joke could is super simple to translate. And it could start with any language. It could start with uh, in Japanese. I don't know the word for means, so obviously I, I still don't know it. But like it could start with gato. Pronunciation is probably terrible. Means neko or something like it could be any two languages to start and then it could just translate very easily to any other languages. Which is why it's odd that the English one is that joke, but the, not because the original was, and it's kind of surprising. But it is what it is. I wonder whose idea it was to make that the joke in English. Whether that was like the Japanese side was like, oh, make this joke in English because it's funny. Or if they were like, oh, what joke can we go for here with this name? My assumption is that's what it is. Like, oh, how do we turn this into a joke? Making a joke about the difference in language kind of makes sense. Okay, I hope there's... I hope there's a large monster. Something to in involving a large monster for the next Prowler quests. It's also possible that I didn't unlock any more and that's just the only Prowler quest on this level, but that's unlikely. I like the popo. They're a fun little creature to see in the background. A rock tour. Oh, Ramobra. Oh, rock tour. Gross. Terrible quests. Oh, some of the worst quests I've ever seen. 
I'm going here in case I can get a, uh... Boost. For carrying transporter. Insomniac would be nice for specific monsters. Supercat. Yep, Supercat. Please trigger. Wonderful. I don't know if I clicked enough there. I don't actually look at the screen. I just click, click, click until it makes enough noises, I think. It's weird that Mealynx is put in orders? Like, why would a Mealynx order anything from us when they just steal? Why would we accept an order from a Mealynx when they constantly steal? That's the only character, the only character. It's the only trait the Mealynxes have in these games. I'm going up through three because I don't want to climb in six. The six climb is a little annoying. Whereas three, four, five should be faster. Like the only interaction in this game with Melinx is, is them attacking you and trying to steal from you. So why would you, why would they accept an order to take, to steal a wyvern egg from a Melinx or for a Melinx? Blue moon. This is kind of odd to me. It's like if a bulldrome showed up and was like, hey, can you steal me some gargwa eggs? It would just be weird. If only I didn't get unlucky on that first draw. Wow, that's your own fault, Rathian. I'm going to commit to this because I'm lazy. The Rathian's the reason the egg got broken. But yeah, if I didn't get a mystery bone, instead I'd got an egg on that first one, it would have been I'd have been out of here already. Which is moderately tedious. Here's where I have to make sure that I don't press the run button. If I press the run button even once, I will forget to let go, and I will jump too far once, and the egg will break. Which is obnoxious. It's also weird that you can climb down these for some reason, despite the fact that clearly they can't they have to use both arms just to hold the eggs. And yet they're able to climb while holding it. Anyway, that's it. Nothing to get out. Two one home. Easy. It's the least important delivery type. I think this one, they balance the egg on their face, basically, as they descend, but... Somehow, I think that makes more sense than the hunter. Where the hunter just holds it in one arm while climbing with their other arm. Which their legs do support it a bit. But when they're carrying it normally, they, they seem to struggle with two arms holding the egg. So it's weird that they can climb with one arm, one arm holding the egg. It's just a weird, weird system. Anyway, that's done. That's over. Haha. Uh -huh. Stolen egg. I do, the game has less and less of these as I get further into the stars, so it's getting better, but I'm hoping, I, 
The hub has a reasonable amount of those types of tedious mini quests. I think it might have fewer than the village though, which would be nice. Really looking forward to like the end game components of this though, when it's actually just hunting monsters and not doing small side quests. Again, I can skip the side quests, but I'm committed to doing my best to full clear everything. Oh, there's a- I got a quest a while ago oh no, not another one. Okay, that's good. That's fun. Uruk Tor is annoying. Remobras is even worse. Is even worse. Remobras are even worse. I need to check something though. Um... Uh, MH Generations Ultimate... Uh, aim... Boomerang up. There's a way to aim up, I think. There's some, like, button to aim, I think. Away we go. Because if I can aim up to hit Remobras, it'd be nice. That's not perfect timing on the transition. It's like, yeah, I can't throw it that way. If I do this, does it do anything? No. No. Oh, okay, that's how you aim. Okay, so you can, you can charge up a boomerang and you can aim it. That's you actually the other way actually. Remobras I know are in zone eight. But you can charge up a boomerang. I don't know if the charge shot does more or anything, but if I want to hit a Remobra that's up in the air, I can charge, I can aim, I can hit it with a right bumper, aiming with the left stick. It's a fun design for the area. I'm passing through three on the off chance that it helps me. In case there's some Remobra here. It's a fun cave. Rock tours. Bane of my existence. I'm gonna have to kill 10 of those as a Prowler. Probably not finishing the Prowlers today though. Given that I have two of these and a Yan Kutku head break, it's gonna take a little while. Okay, that's not enough to lock, knock it out of the air. So it's still gonna be awful because it doesn't knock them down or anything. They just do this. I'm gonna try mailing in the hopes that it will keep them on the ground. Or kill them quicker. Okay, that, that did seem like it might have killed it quicker than if I had tried to boomerang it. Especially given that I don't have the upgraded boomerangs. I hate... Why do these exist as monsters that I actually have to kill? It's just so tedious. Like, any monster that flies is annoying when it flies. And that's not unique to this game. That's any game, basically. 
any monster that flies in that sort of manner will almost always be really frustrating. There's actually sp some specific other game that I'm thinking of where flying monsters are the worst. The fact that I can't multi-shot aimed is really annoying. Is it really so much to ask to be able to shoot multiple times that it, with aiming? Instead of having to aim every single shot, it'd be so much quicker. Kill, it, and it would only be useful on this... Well, no, it'd be useful on large monsters. Better aim for tail cuts and face breaks and stuff. It's sort of... Just since I'm doing a boring quest like this, I feel like talking about why it's fun to do all the quests, even if a lot of them are really annoying. Like, I could assume, and I would be correct, that these small monster quests are really boring and are terrible and I would never want to see them again and never deal with them but it's always I think wait is it saving the aim location it might be no it was just a coincidence I think like I could assume these quests would be terrible and again I wouldn't be wrong but I wouldn't actually know for certain like, there's a chance these quests could be kind of fun to do. And, like, it's part of the game. And, like, if I, if there's a bunch of bad quests that are filler, that is bad. That's not a good part of the game. It's a negative element. And like, I'll say it. I didn't do every single... Every single available quest in... Rise. I didn't do every single available quest in World. World is a different case, though. Partially because of how investigations are unlocked, and if you did every single available quest, you did every investigation that showed up. That's not what you even intended to do. But, like, for the... I think I up until mid to late high rank, I think I mostly did all of the like regular quests like pretty much every not not just key quests but i think i skipped a few here and there but like i don't think it was this annoying in my memory but i also might not have done every single quest i might have skipped mushroom gathering and small monster hunts I might have only done every single large monster side quest. So it's not an accurate comparison. Same with Rise. I didn't do every single Rise quest. The small monster quests in that are also really tedious though. I did one and then I gave up. One that was not a required one and then gave up because it was really boring. It took me pretty much just as long to kill the single, the like 20, 20 small monsters as it would take to kill a single large monster and I would have way more fun hunting a single large monster. And honestly, I don't think this game's that far off in terms of time required for small monsters. Which isn't really a good thing. But it, it is kind of what it is.
This is six. Yeah, like six minutes. I, I've killed some monsters in about seven. I think I've killed some in less than six. Specifically bull drums. I, I think I've killed a bull drum without giving it time to switch zones. Because it's just such an early monster, so squishy. Yeah, I think I'm doing one more Prowler quest, and then I'll leave the last one. This one I'm leaving because it actually looks fun. I'm just going to get this one done. And then depending on how long the Uruk tours take to kill, I might... I will probably save picking up all the quests for next time. After I do the Yen Kutku. Like, I think I'll do the Yen Kutku break. And then after the Yen Kutku break, I'll stop for today. No, no, I'm dumb. I'll do the Yen Kutku break next time. And then I'll do all the quest reading after that. I'm stopping today after this quest. Excuse me. Sniffily. Oh, this is going to be annoying because they're going to dig into the ground and I'm not going to be able to kill them before they do. Oh, it's awful. I don't have the boomerang buffs and stuff yet because I can't. I have to build the gauge, but... This might be the second worst. Ah, maybe third worst small monster, I think. Remobras are the worst. 100%. They're the worst small monster to hunt. Conchu are pretty bad, too. But these guys digging into the ground, wasting time like that is annoying. And it's all about it just being a time waste, not difficult, just tedious. Conchu have a similar sort of, you hit them, they bounce because they roll up into a ball, then you have to hit them after, it's all kind of annoying. They go flying when you hit them, Conchu are annoying for that, but Remobra are the worst because they constantly are flying, and most Weapons are pretty bad at attacking upwards in these games. I bet Remobra with an Insect Glaive would actually be pretty acceptable. Not fun, but it wouldn't be that bad. Why is there nothing here? Oh, there are bugs, but like... Okay, there's going to be no Rook Tor in Zone 8. I will check. Because it goes to zone 7 anyway, but... Please kill it in this combo. I missed. No, it didn't. But my, my Palico buddy did. I need to trigger Big Boomerang. I think they will die more effectively. They have the zippers. I I know these like baby taiga are not necessarily um, canon as it were. But if but there's a zipper on this, which is funny to see. I mean, canonicity is not that important. It's kind of interesting, because canon comes from canonical, I believe. But it's canon instead of can canon. Canon would be terrible to say. Oh, it's it's within the canon. The canon of Monster Hunter. 
cannon so well the reason this cannon sounds better is because that's what people say and what people say generally will sound better because it's what you're used to oh we're halfway there oh whoa not oh whoa that's a terrible choice of word on the internet We're halfway there. Oh, uh, whoa. What is it? Oh, whoa. Uh, oh, yeah, it's more of an oh. Uh, a continuation of an O oh, as opposed to an O oh, and then a whoa. Oh, Yeah, makes sense. Living on a prayer that these rock tours will stop getting my way. Yeah, that, that mouth is very um, Ornithochirus is what I I checked the name of the pterosaur. From Walking with Dinosaurs, the episode where the dinosaurs don't walk because they fly. Or the segment of the episode can't remember if it was a fully an episode focus on the pterosaurs or not fun show or series it'd be fun to see more oh i wonder if that i've been meaning to check if the apple the apple dinosaur show has gotten a third series planned or released yet I'm not checking zone one, going straight to three. Now I have to check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not surprising, I could literally see it. A prehistoric planet? I think is what it was called. It's a very fun show. Frankly, I don't remember too much specific specific. This imagery that has stuck with me, like the swimming T-Rex. But I've seen so many different dinosaur documentaries. So, like, outside of specific imagery like that, I don't know whether something comes from that or another older one because unless the image itself is in my head I can't really compare well I guess image or cases like the Lypleridon from Walking with the Dinosaurs that was they said it was 25 meters long when evidence had already been brought forward to suggest that they would probably be several meters shorter than that at most and that even at the time of the release the 25 meters was o was an overly large speculation it is the first okay the plant prehistoric planet is the first major dinosaur focused documentary series produced by the bbc since planet dinosaur Planet Dinosaur was an odd one. Not very odd, just different. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's anything about us third season but at least it's two and it's it's a fun show i would watch two three four five six more seasons It's fun to see people online with like 
I'm a bit concerned for Prehistoric Planet Season 3, because there has been no trailers, no nothing about it. Isn't it coming this month? Four months ago, when there has only been two seasons. With a clear like, no, there was no confirmation, presumably, of a third season that month. Just speculation that was wrong. I assume. Because, like, no trailers, yet assuming it would be released within that month feels weird. Maybe I missed some news, but... Maybe they had a- maybe four months ago they had a reason to believe that. Oh, maybe five months ago, actually, not four. Yeah, they did not hint at another, a season three, yet someone made a post online saying they were worried that it was supposed to come out this month and there's been no trailers. The internet is a magical place where people make stuff up and then are disappointed. and easy one hopefully just because i don't like the sudden switch i hope there's one more and that's it one more prowler quest and then i'm done with this level maybe it's possible that there's quests in this tier that i have to complete hub quests to unlock or something i doubt it but next time i'll do coot coot ear breaker then I have a lot of quests to clear, or quests to pick up, I guess, people to talk to. Then after talking to all the people, I don't know where I'll start. I might start with Gormagala. Just because it's the first on the list. Oh, I really want to do Bracadios. I really want to hunt a Bracadios. Ooh, it's a difficult choice between Gormagala and Bracadios. Ooh, it's a hard choice. Kieran's also pretty cool. So, there's Kieran. Bracadios. The Regios. Tigrex. The Nogre. And Gormagala. Those are all the new monsters on this tier, unless there's more quests that get other new monsters. I think I'll do Bracadios next time, unless the quests that I pick up change anything. Because I've never fought a Bracadios. I've actually, I think five or six years ago, I saw like a rough understanding of how some parts of the fight exist, but I never really paid that much attention. All I know is about goo on the ground that explodes, and that might not even be normal Bracadios. That might be raging. So it'll go how it goes, and I will probably try to do Bracadios next time, because it's a cool punchy monster. And then depending on time, I might do Gormagala. So it'll be a lot of fun, I think. Unless grabbing all these quests takes 40 minutes, in which case... It won't be fun, but I will still do the um, quest. I will 100% do Bracadios next time. So I'll stop here. Uh, I have one Prowler quest left, and then I'm done with 5-star, hopefully. So have a nice day. Bye-bye.